What's up guys and gals, this is Greer back here, your guys' host as always, bringing you guys the latest behind the bar reviews for Seven Deadly Sins, chapter 326. Let's get underway with this one guys, because this did not go, this did not go nearly as bad as I had predicted, or nearly as bad as I feared. Nakaba didn't go too, too far with it, in my opinion, what Dan pulled off was cool. Shouldn't have done kind of what it did, I suppose, but it was cool. Like, let's just get underway with this because for some reason she's in some like nightingale friggin', you know, sentry dress sort of idea going on there at the cover page. Once again, Nakaba not ever really utilizing the cover page properly. So, um, but we get into it. Even the Demon King does not know what this move is. This mother creation attack, right? And I predicted, I believe in my last review and on the podcast with uh, Grim Reaper, go check it out on his channel. It wasn't a boar's head. It was more like a roundup of different chapters that week. Um, that potentially I thought that she might like take all the earth and make it like quicksand almost, but like hard as rock or or metal, like maybe heavy metal, the earth, but bury the Demon King in it and just constantly, continuously bury him, kind of like open up a giant chasm, drop him down in it, and constantly bury him with the earth so that it would delay him. Similar to how uh, Tien, or Tien uh, uh, Ten Shinhan from Dragon Ball Z managed to stop Cell. Uh, imperfect Cell, might I add, but still managed to, by constantly firing heavy level you know, sacrificing his own life force level key blasts, it was just enough to, with the continuous barrage, it was enough to at least hold him down. Didn't really do any damage or any lasting damage, but it was enough to stall him for X number of time, right? I thought that that's what Deanne could pull off, and it would make sense with the concept of the story. That's not what happened. But before we talk about what happened, the artwork in this, some of the panels of the Seven Deadly Sins, the, especially the one of the reaction of the Demon King later in the chapter, stellar, but even more so is this Mother Creation attack. The artwork for this is absolutely stunning. Demon King doesn't know what it is. Deanne's twirling her hammer for some damn reason, and all of a sudden, right by the lake, right, you have your lake, if this is our lake. And then all of a sudden, all of the ground around it just shatters. Like from, like, if this is the bottom of the lake, it shatters below it. It keeps the entire lake intact. Physics be damned. It's a magical lake. Um, and it keeps the entirety of the lake intact, but it takes every bit of land in this. I mean, it looks like a few miles worth sort of idea. Like, we don't really know the full extent, but it looks massive. And she shatters it all into giant rock formations and just barrages the demon king with it constantly sending all of this stonework and stuff just flying at him and it delays him to a good amount i mean i really don't think that the demon king the way he's been hyped up but once again this is a, De a deanne issue deanne being able to pull off this move i'm okay with that it's a very stunning visually stunning looking panels and it and it's a cool attack I like, you know, everything about it. It's very appealing to the eye. And Deanne should be able to pull off a move to this scale and stuff. The How the Demon King handles it is a bit of an issue, but that's on the Demon King side, not on Deanne. So I'm not hating on Deanne for this portion. Um, because Demon King being hit by basically, okay, well, uh, by this logic, King doing increase, the swords would hit the Demon King. Once again, I don't believe that he, the way the Demon King has been hyped up, it doesn't matter if you have a million swords thrown at him, he should be ten times faster than any attack by Deanne or something like that, right? So it wouldn't matter if she shattered and threw a, a million boulders at him, he'd just dodge them all or destroy them all with his mere presence, you know, sort of idea. But either way, it's working, right? It's working. So... And it's a barrage, and I mean, they're doing some back and forth uh, dialogue, and none of it's really relevant. It's just, oh, you foolish giant girl, you think you can stop me? Yes, I do! No, you can't, Deanne. No, you can't. Um, and basically, upwards it goes, and it's lifting the Demon King. The attacks is a constant barrage to lift him off the lake. So he's been standing, and it's like, once again... The lake is an issue here because like, ah, you're getting me off the lake. And Melio just says later on in the chapter, I may or may not bring it up then, that 
uh, oh, we've taken away your unlimited magical supply. It's like, you guys had that too. Unless he starts pulling the ruler shit again, which, I mean, he probably could now. I, I forget if we've seen that at this point. There's so many inconsistencies with Nakaba that I have no idea if he's actually done that at this point. But um, he certainly, it's like, okay, but you guys have unlimited magic, and so does he. It's an even playing field. Lifting him off of it shouldn't. And this is the Demon King, apparently in a prime form, stronger than ever, I'm pretty sure his, like, his mana pool should be, well, pretty close to endless, you know? It's kind of like in an RPG where you load up all those, like, magic regen items, like 10% plus to magic regen speed and stuff, to the point that you can constantly cast spells. I'm sure you see the bar go down, but it's constantly doing this. Because it's going down because you're casting spells, but you have so many regen, so many buffs on your character that you're, it just it cycles faster than you could ever cast. So I assume that a character on the Demon King's level would have something similar to that. So this whole lake thing, once again, bothers me. But that is beside the point. Once again, visually stunning, everything's fine. This is when it gets a little weird. I don't, I, I don't like this point. I, I really don't like this point, this part, any of it. Because Deanne basically starts talking like, you know, I'm going to, like, the, the queen of the giants thing is fine. Like, the king, King Dola trusted this to me, and I will not let him down. I will be worthy of being queen of the giants, and I will lead them on a new path. I'm like, good, Deanne, good talk, good speech, good dialogue, fine. But then it's like, ha, you dare, the demon king says, ha, you dare, girl, you dare to step up to me, sort of idea. She's like, yeah, and that's when... Uh, it's like, you can't fight me. And then Meliodas and Elizabeth. I mean, I know they're trying to hype up their friend. But honestly, no, she cannot take him on. If, if this was the case, like, Meliodas says, huh, you must be blind then. Even I would be afraid to take her on when she's pissed off. And Elizabeth's like, yeah, she cares so much about others other than herself. Knock him a power up. And I'm like, okay. Well, if Meliodas, if you're like, well, even I would be afraid to fight her face or do anything like that. Meliodas, if you are truly of that opinion, then leave. If Deanne can honestly go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Demon King at this point, why are you all here? Why are you necessary? Why did it take Bond, King, and Escanor to take him on simultaneously just to hold him back up to this point if Deanne can just do all the work? I mean, and once again, she's still the weakest sin. I mean, maybe next to Gother or... You take away Merlin Hack's abilities. But she's not on their level. So th this this dialogue, I know they're trying to amp it up, but it makes no sense given the context of the way the battle is flown and stuff. And the way they make it sound is like, oh, yeah, I mean, all we got to do is really piss her off. You know, why don't you try pulling the wings off a king and see her go berserk? She'll kill you, you know, Demon King. We don't even need to do anything. It's the way it's implied and makes it sound to me. Once again, maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I hate when they talk up a character, you know, like they're actually able, like, sure, she's contributing to the battle. She's doing something useful. That's great, and I don't mind that. But the way they make it sound is as though she can actually fight him, like a 1v1, and she cannot. If she can, once again, that's a knock, uh, that, that's knock about friggin' power scaling gone all tits up, right? So, outside of this part, though, outside of this part of the chapter, when they do all this, and we get Meliodas and Elizabeth talking them up, and Deanne's like, you know, Elizabeth, Meliodas, and everybody's always there for me, and especially King, who's always there to protect me and stuff. Bond, basically, after that part, Bond looks up, and this entire time, the barrage is still going on, right? The barrage is still going on. Deanne's still swinging Gideon. She's still, you know, and don't get me wrong, this part is okay. It's actually Deanne, other than one part, Deanne isn't the actual problem. It's the reactions of the characters to what Deanne is pulling off and their overestimation. Once again, the dialogue is what has been ruining things. Mael and Rudesiel, or Ludeshell, or whoever, um, their dialogue in reference to Escanor and how Sunshine works is the actual problem with what people have with Escanor right now. You know, so it's it's the same thing. It's the same with this lake thing. It's the same with the Meliodas thing. It's the same with the curse thing. It's all down to the dialogue that has caused the issue. It's not the feats shown, you know, from the actual combat. So 
I'm sitting here going, okay, okay, that's fine. King does this hilarious little thing. I think this is funny because Bond basically, Bond has always been like, like poke the bear sort of attitude. And it's why we love him, of course, in his little sing song voice. You know, he's always trying to poke that bear, you know, trying to wake the sleeping giant sort of idea. And Bond looks up at him and basically says, you know, hey, King, aren't you going to say anything? You know, Meliodas and Elizabeth kind of did. Like, aren't you going to say anything after she said something so nice to you and stuff? And finally, King's like, huh? 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 And he's like, you know, and I mean, King's in his adult form, in his Elvis form. He's looking pretty swag about it. And he just basically looks at Deanne and says, all right, Deanne, after we defeat the Demon King together, immediately after, marry me. You know, and I'm like, okay, well, um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like this, but, um, hmm, hmm, oh, put the gin on top of that one. Anyways, um, yeah, okay, so. Marriage, I guess, is a thing among the giants and the fairies. I assume it's meant to be taken as a traditional English wedding and marriage. Okay. Um, I had no indication that um, the giants or the fairies had something like this. I mean, it's not, I guess, unusual, but it, it seems a little bit like, I don't know. It just seemed to come out of left field. Like, I, I don't remember any indication that we've had married, like, husband and wife fairies or uh, giants before. You know, it, it just doesn't seem to be their way. Um, I mean, I suppose with Matrona, we saw her and stuff. So I, I guess there is some precedent. It just it just was like, oh, like, that's not what I expected. I thought their relationship was 100% or whatever. Like, when Bond, like, Ed King on to say something, I thought he would say, like, something like, you know, after this, let's, you know go back to the Fairy King's Forest together or something, something similar. Like let's spend the rest of our lives together. It just felt like the marriage thing was a little bit, oh, whoa, that, you know, that wasn't even a thing on my radar for their relationship. Like their relationship kind of came full circle already. So it's just kind of like, there's nothing left for that portion. Right. Um, and I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. That's, that's fine. It just felt a little strange. Here was the problem with the end. Here was the, here's the problem that I really, this felt so cheesy and so, um, I guess, Cindere, I guess? Maybe not Cindere, I, I don't know. The panel looks so gross. Her facial expression is so goddamn cringeworthy where she's just like, she's blushing and stuff. And I'm like, okay, that's in the end. And she's like, oh, I'm blushing. Of course I will, King. And, and she's like, She's still, during this moment, I don't mind that they're having this conversation while Deanne's doing all this stuff because they're amping her up. And I mean, I suppose this could be considered amped up, but the fact that she pauses in the assault on the god of demons, the one whose very presence is tearing apart the, from, we can assume at least the size of the United Kingdom, right? They, they say the earth and then the land and then the country, so it's a little... Depends on translation, but at the very minimal, we know it's destroying the land. So it's at least countrywide, his presence alone. And he can't seem to stop a bunch of flying rocks to his presence alone, but whatever, whatever. And they have time, time, with only her attacking with boulders, for her to do this whole, like, pause, blush thing, and then just, like, make this stupid face and blush to the red nines and just fire off like, you know, uh, like the reaction, like, oh, you idiot, pow, you know, sort of idea. It's, it works on, it works with characters who are super strong. Does that make sense? Like, don't get me wrong, Deanne's strong, but this only works, like her reaction of basically, like, Right now is not the time for comedic effect. So since this isn't be u being used for comedic effect, this only works if the character in question is actually super strong, just is a slow start, takes a lot, long time to do something, and you need to like get a reaction from them to go, boom, oh, sorry, I, I'm, I'm supposed to always limit my power, you know, but you pissed me off, so I accidentally used 100%, and they're actually super, super strong, but they're always scared to you like use their fists or something. Then it works. 
here, this does not work for me. This was so goddamn cringeworthy. Like, the Demon King being involved in the middle of this Demon King fight, her blushing and doing a whole, like, oh, I'm so embarrassed, attack, fists down on the ground, ah, stay away. Like, no, no, this doesn't work. This, I, I, I don't like it. I, I don't like it, especially that whole, oh, like, no, no, no. No! 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 Now, in all honesty, guys, in all honesty, outside of the little bit of the lake stuff, that was my only real gripe with this chapter. That felt so cringeworthy, not in a good way. This was not a time for a comedic moment. It wasn't a time for a cindere moment like that. It, that, that wasn't the time or place, and against such an overwhelming threat, like even Nakaba thinks this is a joke at this point or something, that he can use that. It'd almost be, at, at this point, Meliodas might as well lift, lift up Elizabeth's skirt to distract the Demon King and have his eyes just go, you know, like, so just bear with me with that one. To me, it just was such an out of place moment. It fit her character, but it was the wrong time to do it. Everything else was fine. Her attack was fine. Once again, it's on the Demon King that this is affected. Uh, the move is affecting him the way it is, not on Deanne. Deanne showcasing this amazing, once again, stunning attack. And we still see the rest of that. It's not over because after she does the most cringeworthy thing I've ever seen and uh, shoot him up with this whole I will marry you thing with the ugliest face in the world... Then we see this huge, like, giant, I I'm assuming the lake's underneath it. It's like this pure marble almost looking thing that she's created. She's used Mother Creation. She's taken all the rocks. There's, like, these pillars, and it's this totally smooth surface. It It's very white, so I'm assuming it's almost like a marble pearl-like surface. Maybe, uh, maybe something similar to, like, a heavy metal. Maybe she turned all the rock into pure metal sort of idea, shiny, you know, white stone, so, white stone sort of idea, but it's like perfectly smooth. It looks incredible. Once again, the arts, the artwork in this chapter is some of the best we've seen in such a long time. So that, that's 10 out of 10. That cannot be refuted. It's really, really good. Um, Demon King's looking around. It's this huge thing. And we consume the lakes underneath it. So this is where he's like, what is this place? And he's like, Oh, and we see this is at least one good thing. So the, the attack, though it stalled him, managed to push him and stuff, it didn't actually do, seem to do any real damage. So at least that far. They, they didn't go crazy with Deanna. Once again, that's a good thing. That's good. It shouldn't. Mere boulders from the earth shouldn't be damaging the Demon King at this, at this level or this point. Um... So, but he stands there and everyone says, like, where, what is this place? And he's like, oh, it's your final resting place, Stephen King. He's like, the seven deadly sins. Our mission is to take you out. Once again, a little bit of cringeworthy. Um, but he also says, uh, this is where I said it earlier in the review. This is where Meliodas brings up the lake thing again. And I'm just like, once again, I mean, the only argument I can make, and I think it's pretty solid, is that, sure, their magic may be able to be replenished, but if they can't really use their magic against them because of the ruler, then him having infinite magic and them having magic is kind of irrelevant. So it's better to take away his infinite magic supply and limit theirs and make it a purely physical battle. But it appeared like to me like they were doing all physical anyways. So, I mean, I, I suppose that argument is sound. And that's okay. But I just wish they had explained it in more words. You know? I mean, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I, I didn't see a good translation of one of the chapters. Maybe Merlin or somebody did explain that better. And I got a rough translation by the time I did the review or something a few chapters ago. Maybe. Maybe. So so don't bite my head off, guys, if I'm totally wrong about that. Um, but I just think it's kind of like... Once again, you should have taken care of this lake problem a lot or sooner if that was the whole case. And we saw in earlier forms that magic was still affecting with Elizabeth with the whole bloodstained Ellie thing, that magic was still affecting the Demon King. So, anyways, uh, outside of that, you know, as I said, um, they're all there. They're all set to go. Now, I'm hoping, once again, this translation was very late, guys. Uh, as you can tell, it's Tuesday night. It's very, very late. And by the time I get this review out, it will be basically Wednesday morning, like like midnight for me. Um, but this line, I hope, has changed because it's not as badass as I thought when I saw the Raws. 
And it's basically after they're all like, yeah, yeah, we're all good. And then we see a finger. One finger from one badass mustachio man. And no, it's not Alex Luis Armstrong, but I think, I think these two could have a good bromance. And it's Escanor, his fingers up, and he's just standing there like, ah, and there's one more piece of bad news for you. It's high noon. And then we see he's in the one form. So, so, I'm super hyped. For the next chapter. I want to see what the one can do to the Demon King. If Deanne can stall and push him up to this platform in a comedic fashion. Then no one can tell me that the one ain't doing some damage to this guy. Okay? And I don't care if you like Eskinor anymore or if you have so many problems with this stuff. and the fight is still going to be hype. Escanor and the One is still hype. We've only ever seen it twice. Twice, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing wrong with seeing a fan-favorite character doing his, a fan-favorite move that we just never have truly seen enough of and got cut short in the Battle of Six. Now we get to see it for a third time. Come on. I mean, if Nakaba's going to screw all this up anyways, we might as well get some metal fights, right? That's why I really like this chapter. I have a couple of the, the same issues as I've had with the whole arc. And once again, that little Deanne thing. But the artwork was 10 out of 10. And the hype for next chapter is 10 out of 10. So you have to take the good points at least. If Nakaba screwed up other stuff, well, I can't keep blaming him every week for that. It's already set, it's already set at this point. He can try to do some damage control, but he might as well hype me up on the things he hasn't screwed up yet. And he hasn't made me, my, I don't have any distaste for Escanor hype. I don't have any distaste for good artwork. So this is just wonderful. I can't wait. Of course I'm an Escar fanboy, boys. Of course. Of course I am. But it doesn't take away that, that anybody who's still reading Ties Out right now, if you are still reading Seven Deadly Sins, you can't tell me that you are not hyped for Chapter 327. Because if you're still reading it, and you've gone through all the bullshit that we've all dealt with this arc, then did this chapter hype you up more? Did the ending of last chapter with Mother Creation hype you up more than seeing the one go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Demon King? Did um, seeing Gelda show up at the battle before she went into Zeldra's mind a few chapters ago, did that hype you up for the next chapter this much? That's what I'm saying. 327 has a such a high level of hype. No matter how much you might dislike Escanor, I know you all want to see what the one can do. Especially since we already saw his two moves used outside of it. You know he's got a third move up his sleeve. Something he's got number three. Number three is there, guys. So I'm 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 just I'm excited. I'm excited to see it. Once again, I hope the line's more badass. I wanted it to be way more arrogant or something, you know. I, I'm still waiting for him to say he's like, ah, well, I did take out the princes. It's time to go for the king, you know, and boom, cruel sun up or something like that. I want him to have a more badass line. Um, saying like, oh, you have another piece of bad news. It's high noon, you know. Like, because there's no Samuel Jackson motherfucker at the end of it's high noon, right? So, yeah, I hope the, I hope the line is translated better in the official, of course, but also in the more semi-official than this rough translation. These are always the rough one, guys, but I like to get it out there, and I didn't feel like there was any dialogue that is going to change drastically and change my opinion, yay or nay, on anything that was said. So, uh, maybe some like stuff, we don't know. But what did you guys think of the chapter? What did you guys think of this review? Did you love it? Did you hate it? I apologize for the um, lateness, but of course the, the translated chapter didn't come out until a couple hours ago, guys. So nothing I can do about that. Um, and also the length of the video and stuff. And I haven't had to do one of these in a little while, so I, I was uh, busy tearing apart the basement here. So I'm a little rusty. And that's why there's a lot more ums and ahs and uh, tripping over my own words and stuff. But uh, that being said, uh, once again, like, subscribe, comment. As always, this has been Griever with your Behind the Bar Reviews for Seven Down the Sins, Chapter 326. Be hyped for 327 because I certainly know I am. And we'll see you back here next time, guys. Drink responsibly as always. Peace.